my name is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. In today's video, I want to share with you how you can use your jelly prints in your art journal pages and how to create more texture on your jelly prints. I'm going to be using a variety of tools to add more texture and incorporate these jelly prints into my art journal projects. So let's start by talking about surfaces. There's a variety of surfaces that you can use. I have a lot of these denim pages in my journal and I don't use them very often so I thought I would branch out today and give these a try since we're talking about texture. And so with this denim, it has a nice texture on it, but it is a lot more absorbent than a watercolor paper. And so it's going to work a little bit differently when you're adding mediums to it. For this first step, I've actually gone ahead and added the medium to it already. And I'll just show you how to do this, but because of the drying time, just to kind of keep this video moving along, I did this in advance. But I will show you how to add the stencil biters to a page in your art journal. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna be using this piece of craft paper out of another journal. The reason I chose craft is it does act a little bit more similarly to denim than necessarily watercolor paper will. Uh, both the craft paper and the denim are a little bit more absorbent, so they're gonna handle mediums just a little bit differently. So what I'll be using today is a pearl white stencil butter. I like these stencil butters because they work quite well on a variety of surfaces, but if you don't have stencil butters, any sort of colored medium could work or you could always miss a uh, gel or paste with paint to get a similar effect. And when you're working in a journal, you may want to try to protect the page next to it. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a silicone mat, this one's a little bit small, on one side and I will put another silicone mat underneath and that's going to keep the paste from getting a little out of control. Because I wanted to use some of my Tim Holtz stencils for this project, I am going to have to overlap them. So I wanted to show you what you can do to create a loose background. This is going to be a little less perfect than what you would usually get by just running paste through a stencil. And in this case, because of the way the book is folded, I'm going to, not going to get all the way to the edge. I'm going to leave a little bit of space there. And one thing about the craft over the denim is this does go through a lot easier. When you're using denim, you are going to have to push harder and add quite a bit of medium to get it to stick to the surface. If that bothers you and you don't want to use too much medium, you can always put a layer of matte medium onto your surface before adding your paste and that will prevent it from absorbing too much into the surface. I'm just going to continue to add some more through using my large pellet knife. And you can decide if you want to leave some brown areas, if you want this to be a little bit more organic, or if you want to have full coverage. And you'll notice in some areas I have gotten some strange marks, so you can always go through and just try to blur those lines or just let them overlap. It's not about perfect here because we're going to be covering up most of the surface by the time we're done, but I wanted just to show you the concept of it. This is about creative play. This isn't about perfect. This is not about adding a lot of perfect texture. This is about just getting texture down on the page. And I just enjoy using stencils. I like the different images you get from stencils. You can see that it almost works like a stamp because that paste is still wet. So I often do this type of technique on a lot of my canvas paintings. It's kind of a fun way to add texture before I add paint. And it's not a hard technique to do either. And with this one, I'm just going to leave the edges a little bit more open. But you can see that I've added some texture. Some of it is less pretty. You can always go over areas and try to clean them up a bit and swipe through and add a little bit more detail in there. It's almost like your stencil because it has medium on it already. Almost works a little bit like a stamp in the background. But that's basically how you would add this sort of medium with smaller stencils onto your page. So as our background's drying, the next thing we want to do is decide on what we want to do with our jelly prints. And so I have this jelly print. It's a little bit bigger. It has the white border. I want to try to bring this down to size. And the shapes that I'm focusing on today are circles, rectangles, or more square objects. And so instead of taking a paper cutter, which I totally could. I'm just using a straight edge and I'm just taking, tearing off that extra paper. And I have a couple different straight edges. I have these more decorative ones and you could really use any of these for this process. In this case, I'm just going to go around the edge and remove the paper first and then I'll start adding these more decorative ones. And so the reason that I'm doing it this way instead of using a straight edge is I do want those torn lines. This is not meant to be perfect. My whole thought on this art journal page was 
staying away from perfection and just kind of going with my gut a little bit more as I'm creating. Because I tend to be quite planned in my creative practice and sometimes it's nice just to play with textures and see what you'll get. In this case, I'm having a bit of trouble with that. So I am just going to leave that for now. And I'm just gonna bring this strong straight edge in there. And these ones are quite sharp, which makes them easy to cut. And so I have the more curved line on the one side, I have the flat line on the other. Uh, this top part here, I am going to add another more curved jagged line. I'm letting that white edge stay. I want that white edge, I want a little bit more contrast. And you wanna do that with a few more pieces here. If you want everything perfect um, and perfectly even, you can definitely do that. There's no, no judgment here. This is really coming down to how you want this to look and what final look you want. And this might tear a bit easier. I was using a mixed media paper when I did these prints. Uh, if you use uh, copy paper, this might be a little bit easier to tear than it has been for me. So as I've already pre-prepped my denim page and it's fully dry, I'm just going to start playing around with placement of some of my elements. So I have uh, several different elements. I thought I would start with just adding some paper onto my page. I might shorten and lengthen some of these ones, but I'm trying to get the, an idea of like where I maybe want to place them. I don't want to cover the entire background, but maybe in some areas um, I may want to put larger or smaller pieces. And some of these ones I'm probably going to cut down before I add them to the page. So I kind of like how this is looking so far. I'm going to be adding some circles and some other imagery. I wanted to add some of the jelly prints to the background, but I didn't want to take away from the texture and I didn't want to have it so busy that by the time I add circles and other elements, you see nothing of the background. Now that I have figured out placement, I'm going to add additional texture onto these backgrounds. With these jelly prints being lighter, I want to add very contrasting dark colors. And I have these beautiful Baroque stamps. And I'm gonna try adding a little bit of the Distress Villainous Potion Archival Ink to the stamp and add it to the image. This is a fairly dark ink, so this should work fairly well. It's a bit of an experiment because I haven't actually tried it yet, but we will give this a try and see if it's dark enough. And so with this one, I'm actually gonna line these close to each other and just run it along the sides of both of them. There you go. So that purple is really fantastic on this. It's a little bit more subtle than using black. And I just love the look of that. And now it's actually gone on to the white bits as well, which just adds that additional dimension. Because I am enjoying this so much, I'm going to add a little bit more to the other two pieces. And you'll see I'm stamping randomly. I'm not looking at full coverage or perfect coverage onto these pieces. So the archival ink is working quite beautifully on this background because the archival ink is oil based, it will stick to the paint and just add really beautiful layers. If you use a dye based ink, it's not going to set on the acrylic. I'm gonna add a little bit of the black archival. I'm gonna be using the faded type stamp set because I love these fonts, they look beautiful. And because I've already started moving with the cursive design with the Baroque stamp set, adding a little bit of inking to this, I think is going to be really nice as well. And with these ones, I'm just gonna line them up so I can try to stamp as much as I can just with one stamp. And if you want that second and third value, that can always be a nice addition to your background. And stamps are a really easy way of just adding texture, color, and just allowing you to kind of add a little bit of variation to the background. So one design consideration is I only stuck with a couple styles of stamps when I was stamping. I used some font stamps, I used some cursive stamps as well, and I kind of left it at that. You don't want to cover up all the beautiful jelly printing on it. You just want to be able to have it be another layer to add a little bit more complexity to your image. And because I want to add more layers of texture to these. I don't want to take away from the colors I already have, so I'm gonna be sticking with some clear gels. I have some glass bead gel, some clear granular gel, and this crackle paste. This is a transparent crackle paste. I know there's a lot of different brands of these uh, as well. I know Tim Holtz has one. Uh, there's some other ones also on the market. You want one that's gonna be clear because that's what's going to give you some texture without taking away from the background. And so when you're adding crackle paste, you just want to add a little bit to the surface and because the thicker the crackle paste, the bigger the cracks, the thinner the crackle paste, the smaller the cracks. So it's something to think about when you're adding this to your strips. And I'm generally trying to go thinner just so that this dries in a reasonable amount of time. And so what this is going to show up as is very fine cracks and very fine texture on your jelly prints. And so you're not going to lose your jelly print from this. 
And so it doesn't look like it's making much of a difference, but you will be able to see it once it's dry. And because I can't help but use glass bead gel in pretty much everything, I'm going to add a little bit of glass bead gel. And glass bead gel is just basically a clear gel that has little glass beads in it. And this one, it looks like it's quite opaque, but it's going to dry completely clear and you'll be able to see beautiful shine, but it's not going to take away from what you have underneath. It's going to add a little bit more there and mix it in a little bit with the crackle paste, which will give us some really interesting textures once this dries. And you end up having to add a fair layer of it just because the beads themselves, you have to have at least one bead thick to be able to apply this. So it goes on looking fairly thick, but hopefully it will dry quickly. And the last one I want to use is clear granular gel. And this is a, one of my favorites because it has these big grains in it and it is really chunky. It reminds me of like porridge or something. And I think it's fantastic for just adding textures onto the background. And so you can see there, it's very gritty, but I'm going to mix it down into the crackle paste. And again, it's going to dry clear. So as much as this looks like I'm really covering things up, it's going to be pretty amazing when all is said and done. And then I'm just going to add a couple big grains onto some of those areas of the finer glass bead gel. Yeah, it's just going to add a tiny bit of shine and a tiny bit of dimension. And now you want to set these aside to dry as well. They're going to take a little bit of time to dry, but I think it's totally worth it just to get these beautiful textures on your jelly prints. So as those other jelly prints dry, let's move on to our next texture. In this case, what I've done is taken a circle die. I use uh, the circle die with my Vagabond and I cut out all of these circles. So what if you don't have a circle die or you don't have a die cutting machine? It's not a problem. I recently came across this very awesome circle tool. It's called a he Helix Circle and Angle Maker. And what it does, it allows you to make all sorts of circles up to four inches of the diameter on the inside. And you can also do a circle of the outside. So basically what you do with this is you take your pen or your pencil, whatever you're using and add your shape. And so basically it goes in a circle like so, and you have your circle. This is where you could go and make little tiny ones as well. They have some circular shapes already in there, but it is very easy to just choose a shape and cut it out. So basically if you don't have a die cutting machine, get a really inexpensive uh, helix circle maker like this. And that way you can have circles of any size that you want. And they're very easy to cut out with scissors. So now that I have a bunch of my circles already cut out, what I want to do now is add more texture to them because I'm not quite done with the whole adding texture to things. And so I have a bunch of my embossing folders and I find with this technique, uh, these 3D embossing, Tim Holtz 3D embossing folders that have a much thicker pattern or a more detailed pattern seem to work better for this technique. And for the larger ones, I'm just gonna put a few of them in my embossing folders. I'm gonna run all of these through my die cutting machine. So I've added in two of my circles into my embossing folder and I'm just gonna run this through my machine. So to run this through my Vagabond, I basically just make a sandwich, choose a direction, and run it through. It's almost easier to see on the back than on the front, but you have a beautiful texture already put in there. And if you find that you get little white lines like I have there, what you just need to do is spritz the paper just a tiny bit before adding it in the embossing folder and you won't get any of those white lines. For this design, I'm going to have to add some color just to help that pattern come out. If you want to basically pre-add color, you can always just add some paint straight onto your embossing folder. Just be aware of which side of it you're using to see what direction you're getting. And I'm not covering the whole thing because I'm not going to have a circle that's covering the whole thing. And I'm not doing this perfectly. You'll notice that in some areas I am getting it on the leaves. And this is where the Tim Holtz having very fluid paint works quite well for this technique. And I'm gonna use some of these smaller circles that will cause a little bit more contrast. And now we're gonna slide it through the embossing machine and see what we get. So you can see the leaf pattern is still purple and the background has that bronze color on it and that one as well. So that just adds some more subtle texture to that background. And to clean up your embossing plate, you're just probably going to want to wash it or just use a baby wipe just to clean it off because this will stick and it will stain if left on for too long. You can also use archival ink to create these types of patterns as well. In this case, you can just apply it straight on your 
embossing folder. The thing though with the archival ink is it is going to be a little bit harder to get off your embossing folder. Just gonna run a couple of these lighter ones through. And the pattern wasn't perfect, but you can see where it kind of caught those outlines and it really gives it a very vivid contrasting texture. So even though we've already added some texture to this, I'm not quite done yet. Uh, I thought these ones looked really great, but these ones, they need the pattern pulled a little bit further out of them. And one mistake that I made is I actually had these circles on backwards. So really the embossed image on the back is actually the correct way. So I'm still going to play with these and see what I can kind of come up with with them. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using some of the Art Alchemy waxes for this step. I know Tim Holtz has recently come out with his foundry waxes. I haven't had a chance to get a hold of them yet. So we're just going to be using what I have on hand. And I'm going to add a little bit of silver and a little bit of bronze age. Because our background already has a stencil butter kind of silver background, I thought that would work really well. I have these Alt Alternatives stencil brushes. I think I got three of them for $10. They're very inexpensive. I'm just adding a little bit of the wax onto the brush. And I'm just going to add it to one of these images. And you'll notice that it's catching the high points and adding a little bit of wax to those areas. And so a little bit can go a very long way with these images. And if you want to add in a little bit of the silver, and you don't want to add too much to the surface because I, if you rub it with your finger, sometimes I find I get too much and it doesn't, it gets in everywhere, not just the raised areas. And I really love the little highlights that the silver creates. And you can go more or less with this depending on the look that you're going for. With this one, I wanted to add a little bit more to the surface. And that's why I love waxes. A little bit goes a long way. But the one thing about the waxes is you're, because they are beeswax, they are going to resist other things. So think of this as being your very last step. So I'm going to actually bring in a little bit of the blue. These ones, you just want to pull it out, add it to your surface just so you don't have too much in it. And that's a way of just adding another contrasting color. So now our strips are mostly dry, mostly being the fact that you can still see some of the gel from the granular paste. I don't want to wait too much longer. The surface is fairly set, so I'm going to be able to at least work with it without it rubbing off. And you really, you should probably be doing this overnight just so that you have full time to let it dry. With that granular gel being just so thick, uh, it just ends up just taking a little bit longer to dry. But you can see on this piece, I did add a little bit of granular gel up here, which is almost dry. And there's tons of little textures and details in here. And this is where if I really wanted to go crazy, I could go in with a little bit of the Villainous Potion Archival Ink and you could add a little bit of color on top just to help those kind of stick out a little bit more. That's one thing you need to always realize is that when you're working with acrylic, you have to be very careful with the inks you use. Because these are oil-based and waterproof, you can add them on top of gels, but a lot of other mediums will not work. And now I'm going to add these onto my page, but I'm not going to do a decoupage like I usually do with this. In this case, I'm just going to use my extra heavy gel because I have a fair amount of texture on the background and these are fairly heavy. I'm going to add the extra heavy gel, but you could really use any sort of glue that you have on hand for this step. I'm just trying to add like a thick, even coat. I generally don't use extra heavy gel, but because this is such a, a thick and heavy texture that I have put on it, having something that's a little bit stronger is not a bad idea. And because I use mixed media paper, the paper is also heavier. And again, I want to go a little bit different with this. I do not want to make this a decoupage. So I'm not going to be adding medium on top like I would usually do if I was doing a decoupage or a collage kind of technique. Instead, I'm going to do is just make sure that is really well glued down to the surface. And I think I'm, I want to maybe do something like this. Because I want this one to be close to this edge. And I really like the super tattered look of that. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, if you could uh, like this video, it does help other people see it a lot more. And uh, by hitting that like button and subscribing, that just really helps my channel. And so thank you so much for your support. And I hope you've been really enjoying this video so far. And then I always want to make sure things are not totally lined up. And I'm trying to be purposely a lot more random with this project than I usually am. The whole point of this project was for me to loosen up a little bit. So the next thing you want to do is start adding your circles. I've been loving using circles in my creative projects lately. And especially with this one, I was looking at trying to have the nice strong strips or rectangles. And then the idea of circles on top with all these fun textures. And so I'm going to go back in again with my extra heavy gel. I'm just going to adhere these onto my page. 
I want to really add my focal images. And so I really wanted to get into why I created this page. I have these butterflies from Tim Holtz. Uh, they're transparent. And why I chose this was I recently was taking my art drilling class. I ended up working through some exercises and I realized how stuck I am sometimes in my creative practice. I get so stuck into perfect that sometimes I don't allow myself just to create. And so this was a process of being able to get out of that creative block by just going, I'm just going to use simple shapes. I'm going to rip things. I'm just going to add circles. I'm going to add some texture instead of getting really wrapped up into, well, does this match? Does this work? Is this perfect? Instead, it was about the idea of trying to get past my own blocks that I sometimes have and trying to just really be in the moment. And sometimes it's about being brave in your art as well. I find that sometimes in my art, I get so caught up in trying to create things or trying to get the perfect images that sometimes it takes away from my ability to just enjoy the process of it. I like the idea with brave wing she flies. It reminds me just to be brave. Like don't worry about perfect. Don't worry about getting everything like 100%. Just let it be and kind of see what happens. With these butterflies, they look good, but you can see the background in them and I kind of want them to come a little bit more forward. So what I'm going to do is actually take my paint pen and add paint to the back of these. For this, I'm gonna be using my Posca paint pens. Uh, I do have some Artistro ones that I have been using recently, but the Posca ones have a higher pigment level, which gives them a little bit more opacity, which I really want for this project. And so with these ones, I'm actually not going all the way out to the edge. What I'm going to do is I am taking it to the edge of the butterfly image. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to have that little transparent outline. This allows us to pop a little bit more. And I'm just trying to use the side of my paint pen. It doesn't have to be a really thick layer. It just needs to be enough where it just kind of covers up a bunch of those transparent areas. And that's gonna give me just a lot more pop with my images. And I wanna do this to all of my butterflies. So you can see that this one, compared to this one, this one has a lot more dimension to it just because now you're bringing in all of those colors and you're adding white in those places. So I'm just going to do the same thing with all these butterflies, just again, fill in the color and just try to get a lot more of that shine and that opacity that I want that's going to help them pop from the page. So if you're running into a situation where you have ones that are just completely clear, because I do have some completely clear butterflies, what you can do is add in some paint pen, like I did add in the Posca yellow paint pen, and now I'm gonna go over it in areas with the white, and those ones are gonna to combine together. And then I'm hoping that's gonna create a really nice, subtle effect that's going to kind of blend in nicely. I'm hoping those colors will blend together and just like make a really nice effect for these butterflies and that they're gonna match a bit closer to what I want. Sometimes they can be almost a little too bright, depending on what I'm using for paint pens. And actually that worked really, really well. I really like that color mix. And again, it's just using one color of paint pen with a little bit of white over top. So you can see now that I've actually added the white paint to the back, uh, they stand out a lot more. And I love the shininess of the transparency type film that they're using for this, but I really did want that to stick out a lot more. And again, I'm going back to using my gel, uh, not because these need a lot of stuff to stick down, but more because the surface is so uneven. This way it's going to have a really good adherence to the surface and is gonna look really nice. And because there can never be enough gold on a page as far as I'm concerned, I'm using this Pen Touch Gold Pen just to add little dots onto the surface. It's gonna be very subtle. It's funny, you can only really see them some certain angles, but I just kinda of want to show that there is movement of the butterflies on the page. So on this page, we've used a lot of different textures. We've used uh, a medium, in this case, stencil butter, with the stencils. We've added different types of archival ink with stamps. We've added different sorts of granular gels and crackle gels onto the surface. Uh, we've added embossing, we've added waxes. There's so many ways you can create all this fun texture and have it work on one page with your jelly prints. And again, by trying to work those jelly prints together in groups of colors and complementary colors, that's a way you can really help it stick out on the page. So I hope you've enjoyed playing with jelly prints with me and that this has given you some new ways you can add textures to those jelly prints. And these textures could be added to any surface. You could be using patterned paper if jelly printing isn't really your thing. It's just another way you can add texture to your art journal pages, to your card projects, and to your other creative projects. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you like it, subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. You can also find the supply list below in the description. That includes affiliate links. And the affiliate links are another way you can support my channel so I can keep bringing you videos every week. 
If you'd like to see another video about texture, click here. It is one of my texture videos where I go into a lot of different textures and how to use them in your art journal and your panel projects. So I hope you have a really great week, that you take some time for some personal self-care, and I'll see you next time.